Dwarf Fortress. This game was a very influential game, and not just to me, but to many people. I mean, without it, we wouldn't have Minecraft. Though, when I was in high school, what really drew me into the game was the astounding level of detail that was put into it. I've been playing this game since 2008, and it's still in beta. Learning about our lord and savior Tarn Adams and seeing his whole development process of this game gives new meaning to the word life's work. So honestly, I can't wait till I have kids and I'll explain to them while showing them a goblin siege that Erst McMason is locked in the crypt until he's needed. And then as a flashing light that shines upon him with his beautiful new form, I release the lever holding him and let him loose. Seeing him tear through my enemies, reading out each description of what he does to their goblin warlord in excruciating detail. And, and the best part, I'll say to my little ones, this isn't version 1.0. Dwarf Fortress is just fucking cool, man. There's really no limit on how you can play this game. The freedom of what you can do is just absurd. I mean, did you know that your dwarves can set mandates to ban the export of socks for trading? I didn't. There's so much to see and so much to figure out. You got your politics, if you want a lore build, you got your civilization sim, you can create goods of the highest dwarf quality to trade, you can create armies, fight off monsters, create a Mayan blood temple, hell, you can even make cheese. And this is only a fraction of what Dwarf Fortress can bring to you. Dwarf Fortress was created by Tarn Adams, a man whose obsessiveness with his work has gone past the point of stopping, but this dude is just like, but them dwarfs though. Tarn was born in Silverdale, Washington, United States in 1978. He got his interest in coding by his dad who worked in a water waste plant doing data work. Tarn and his brother Zach were constantly moving with their dad due to his work. This made their relationship with each other close since they were all they had. Tarn described himself as the type of dude who'd go to school and just play games when he got back. Oh fuck, I, I, I relate. Tarn and Zach played a lot of computer games and they both loved to recreate the randomly generated monsters themselves, which led them to ask, why can't we do this? So they started to create their own games with RNG in mind since that was a huge factor of replayability for both of them. And so, Bay 12 Games was born. One of the first fantasy games that Tarn and Zack made was a game called Dragslay. This game was created in BASIC, which was your regular text-based RPG of which you fought a bunch of monsters with stats, and then the big boss came up and oh, booga, it's a dragon! This then led them to create another game called Slaves to Mock God of Blood, which was focused on world generation. It was very detailed up to the point where Tarn said you could zoom in on your character and it'd tell you how curly his leg hairs were and the melting point and flash points of various materials. It was insane. And it was. This would be the base of what would be known as Slaves to a Mock God of Blood 2, Dwarf Fortress. Tarn was pursuing a mathematical degree at the University of Washington while he was working on the early build of Dwarf Fort, mainly working on it as a hobby. College was a lot of pressure on him due to the tryhards and the competitive nature of it. So after trying particular substances and going through a bout of depression, he decided to work on the game development full time, funded by the wondrous community of people who love seeing dwarves murder and drink. And almost two decades later, we're looking at a Steam release in the game in 2020. Tarn remarks on this stating, At the end of a math problem, you have a paper and maybe you publish it. And the paper can be a building block for the edifice of mathematics, but to me that's not so important. But working on a problem and having a game when you're done? That's pretty damn cool. And I will state, Tarm is like if you had Jimmy Neutron and Dexter and you fused them and they were on cyber chase and every time Hacker shows up, he just one shots him. That's how fucking smart he is and I'm not even like, that's like not even a good description, but it is. I'm not lying. His mathematical skills are legit on par with NASA and it's just a game about dwarfs. Fucking dwarfs. This game was like one of the main inspirations of Minecraft as the creator Marcus Notch Person states, Dwarf Fortress was one of the best games out there. For me, it's similarity to Dungeon Keeper that's the biggest draw, closely followed by how much it draws from roguelikes. I used to play Ancient Domains of Mystery a lot too a few years back, and it always had a certain mystical, magical feeling to it. Dwarf Fortress has this too, and it's not just a lack of real graphics that does it. It's more of the way you can subtly fail totally and know it's your own fault. But you don't mind, you just start over and start killing all cats on sight. It's quite surprising that Tarn has done this for years since he's been able to do this with countless donations by the supporters of his work, constantly supplying him with hot pockets to satisfy his nutrition. Though some do worry if anything were to happen to Tarn since there isn't really someone who is as dedicated to his work as he is. But that just shows the testament of how influential this game was. If people were considering getting your brain downloaded on the internet just to play a game about dwarves eating cheese and killing forgotten monsters. From my personal experience with Dwarf Fortress, I learned about the game when I was in high school. 
pretty much messing around with PCs, adding emulators and the like. But then on a Brazilian basket weaving forum, I read about this game of which reading shit like drawing a line into a line can happen. As soon as I heard that, I quickly downloaded it. Though, there is one problem with the game that I came to quickly realize. This game has ASCII graphics, which, if you don't know what they are, here, I'll use an example. You see this S? Yeah, that's a snake. You had to have an active imagination while playing this game. And let me tell you, I had that in spades. Though I will say, Dwarf Fortress was also a game that was not hard to play, but have you ever seen a UI that looks like this? You'd play this game on and off too. But looking past all that, because Dwarf Fortress looked like a bunch of code, I basically got away with playing it in class because I just told him I was working on Python. So yeah. I'm a clever bitch! This game was a catalyst of me trying out roguelikes as well, since every fortress you made was basically a civilization roguelike, and the difficulty of this game just kind of made my inner masochist squeal with glee. Here's one of the things that happened to me while I was playing Dwarf Fort. For one of my fortresses, I was very interested in creating a tavern for travelers since I was not good at making armies and I would rather just conscript them. The tavern itself was quite good, drinks were plentiful, my prepared egg dishes were mastercrafted, there was a baby on the floor, things were great. But one day I noticed some of my animals were missing and I didn't pay this any mind, yet that would prove to be a horrible mistake. So I just resume life as normal until one of my patrons starts to glow and transforms into a horrible creature, a were koala. He starts attacking my dwarves, but I quickly dispatch him with my own ragtag military and like things settle down. I put some of the injured in the hospital and the one still breathing back to work, cleaning up everything. Though, funny thing about werebeasts, you kill one, more take his place, like cockroaches or Sonic fans. Here's a picture of the end result. When I first saw this, I was horrified. Then I laughed a little. And then my whole fortress died, which then leads us to a very important thing you need to know about Dwarf Fortress. Losing is inevitable, but it's fun. As hard as you try, there will be a threat you can't deal with, and it'll be your own damn fault. But don't be discouraged. It's more of a journey about creating a fortress that you'll remember for years to come. Dwarf Fortress's community is one of the best gaming communities that I've ever been in because of the openness of wanting new players to get in the game. They're practically giving away like tips on how to play like it's free real estate. But this game has given me so many hours of entertainment that I hope you try it out for yourself and maybe you'll enjoy it yourself. You'll, you'll make some cool armies, you'll get some cool stories. I mean, seriously, read those descriptions. They are quite graphic. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this little essay. I will see you guys later. K, love you. Bye.